Welcome back. A little taste of Cuba, famous for the cigars, baseball, boxes, mojitos, and still a lot of 1950s American cars can be viewed there. Thawing of relations, of course, with the United States, the restoration of diplomatic relations. And this is the surface, we have to say, that is the surface that does not look a good one. Jürgen Klinsmann is not particularly happy about it, but there's a game to be played and won here. Let's have a look at the lineup here then. United States making four changes from the side which beat Trinidad and Tobago in the last qualifier. 21-year-old keeper Ether Horvath making his debut there, Taylor. The youngest goalkeeper to start since 1994, Zach Thornton. I think the key combination to look at, start, this back four started four of the five Copa America games, and then obviously up front, Josie Altador, Bobby Wood. Can they continue that form that they've been in? And surprisingly, Julian Green gets his second start since 2014 rarely seen since scoring against Belgium at the World Cup in Brazil. Cuba have changed their team a lot since losing to the USA 6-0 at the Gold Cup last year in the United States. Watch though for the striker there, Michael Reyes, the first Cuban to sign for a foreign team. He plays for Cruz Azul in Mexico. 40 caps for Alberto Gomez as well, the midfield player who scored in a World Cup qualifier against Panama. Cuba in all red. That's the scene here. This game might have taken place under floodlights a little later than this, but those lights are not deemed to be quite good enough, and that's why it's an earlier kickoff here. And a bumpy old surface, Taylor. Yeah, this is a difficult situation. I think it's going to be very interesting. Even Jurgen Klinsmann was speaking about it this morning you want to assess players in the right environment but the way this field is bumpy hard difficult to play it's going to be very interesting to see if the United States can get any rhythm going in possession especially through the midfield interesting to see that young Christian Pulisic is in the lineup again there's a lot of excitement about him it looks like he's starting out anyway on the right hand side with Julian Green towards the left Green is an interesting selection you're right Taylor, we've seen very little of him. 11 meetings between these two countries. The only time Cuba have won was the last friendly they played on Cuban soil. That was 1947, and Cuba won it 5-2. But the USA, you'd think, ought to be at a different level, particularly with this strong side they have on the pitch for this game. It's fed out towards Gomez, who tried to play it forward just weeks away from the first two games of the hex the final stage of qualification home to Mexico and then of course very difficult one away to Costa Rica Cuba getting themselves in a bit of a mix at the back there Altidore nearly found a way through Napoli's got it away for Cuba and it's picked up by Hernandez Gomez looks to switch the play. Reyes helps it on. Listen to the Cuban fans here. They desperately want their side to do something special in this historic game. But I have to say, the surface really... It's, it's brutal. Like a box game, it's brutal. isn't it? And ultimately, it just makes life difficult for Jurgen Klinsmann and his staff to get things right. Now, obviously... You've got to be professional about your approach. You have a good understanding. It's a good will game between two countries. But ultimately, this is preparation for Mexico, Ian. So your back four needs to be in line with each other, especially with Michael Bradley in front. But speaking with Jurgen Klinsmann, you just, it, it, this is a difficult, difficult way to assess your players. Conditions here are a little on the primitive side. I think you were being told that there's no actual running water in the... Uh, in the stadium and the, the players had to change yeah. at the hotel yeah the they? players changed at the hotel then came for warm-ups and then not showering after the game in the stadium that was Reyes chasing it Michael Bradley captaining the USA of course his father the former coach of the USA Bob Bradley just appointed to uh, the job at Swansea City in the English Premier League. His first game's away to Arsenal, by the way. Bradley looking to play that one forward towards Pulisic. 
and he was caught there. And surely going to be a free kick. Napoli is his challenge. And this is going to be a little bit of a growing up game for Pulisic because you look at it. As, you, how many World Cup qualifying games, Ian, did the United States look at last World Cup qualifying cycle where they went to Honduras? It's difficult. Pulisic at 18 years of age. Th this is where you grow up a little. You got to have a good understanding. Quick free kick here as Pulisic's wide open. Got a chance here if he lets the shot go. Chance just went away from him. It seemed to sit up for the volley. And then he couldn't quite get that shot right towards the top corner. And a roller coaster ride, really, for Jurgen Klinsmann in his five years in charge. Jeff Cameron flicked on and the Cubans happy enough to give away the corner kick. It was John Brooks who scored famously from a corner against Ghana. Whatever else he does in his life, he'll always have that. He might do plenty else though. Bradley to play it in there. The goalkeeper thought of coming for that, then thought better of it. And Cuba will get the free kick for the pushing and shoving, I fancy. Altidor there, he's on fire at the moment, isn't he? He's been on fire, and then I think you can make a real argument he's in the best form of his career. When you look at the numbers, nine goals in his last 12 games for Toronto, seven goals in his last six games for the United States. I found it interesting that Jurgen Klinsmann, the United States, the last two World Cup qual qualifiers flew in, the physio from Toronto. They're giving Josie Altidore every opportunity to be successful, to stay fit. And I would argue that he may be the most important player for the United States in this round of qualifying. Green plays it wide to Fabian Johnson, the German based player from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Cuba looking to break clear. Brooks giving away the throw. It's very much an old fashioned stadium with an athletics track on the outside. And that's the coach, Raul Maderos. He's the fifth they've had since the USA were last here in a competitive game in 2008 when the US won with a Clint Dempsey goal, just the one goal. And Ian, that leads me to the subject of my Continental Tire Analyst Corner because without Clint Dempsey in the near future for this United States team, a big question is whether or not Josie Altidore and Bobby Wood can play together up front. And a lot of pundits are raising that question, but when you look at the numbers, They've been extremely successful together, and I think it opens the door for Bobby Wood to play as a second forward. He's got the pace, he's got the quickness in tight areas. Imagine Bobby Wood, Josie Altidore firing on all cylinders. Then underneath that is Sasha Klushton and Pulisic and company. Then Jurgen Klinsmann's got a pretty dynamic attack going forward. And maybe the reasons, or one of them, for Altidore's improved form is he does now have a few players snapping at his heels for the positions. Woods become a pretty much automatic selection. Recently, and of course, uh, the emergence of Pulisic as well. Bradley looking to arrow one forward. This is not a surface for a slick passing game. That's for certain. Altidore's taken a crack there. One or two signs that this might be a little bit on the feisty side. Well, it's always going to be feisty, and that's just a high boot. I'm surprised it's not a yellow. And that's what I meant by for the Christian Polisics and Julian Greens of the world. This is a maturing experience because you've got to understand too many touches. Cuba will come in late. The last thing Jurgen Klinsmann in the United States want are any injuries going into those November qualifiers. So it's going to be very interesting today on how the U.S deals with the environment and can they keep any possession and have Cuba chase Michael Bradley to take it too easy for the goalkeeper Sandy Sanchez to claim it it's a good throw from him as well very good throw Hernandez was able to pick it up and now here's Bradley hammered away by Urgeles 
Williams, the 18-year-old Pulisic. He does look a major discovery for the US. A lot of people have been tried and found wanting. He's been tried and certainly not been found wanting. Julian Green. Kleschen is in wonderful form for his club, New York Red Bulls, and leads Major League Soccer in assists this season. Another one at the weekend, and a goal, too. <laughs> Got to say it, the fans providing a wonderful atmosphere for this game. Question with a little flick on. Made a very successful comeback in the last couple of games after two and a half years out of the lineup. And actually, the last time the United States played here in a World Cup qualifier, Kleshin and Michael Bradley were the center midfield tandem. And I wouldn't be shocked to see Kleshin start against Mexico, and it gives them the ability to keep possession. He's also had good experiences in good games against Mexico. But the biggest question, Ian, about Sasha Kleshin is what? It's not against the likes of the Central American teams. It's against the European teams, the Bowl teams, and those teams and whatnot. But I think Kleshin has really found a niche for himself under Jesse Marsh at the New York Red Bulls. And ultimately, he's in the MLS MVP talk. 49th cap for him today, Sasha Kleshin. I must say, most of us thought we'd seen the last of him in a US shirt. But great credit to him, really, for knuckling down and demanding to be picked again, really. Well, and credit to Jesse Marsh as well as getting the most out of him. Bradley Wright Phillips' life at the New York Rebels has been fairly easy since Sasha Kleshin's return. A lot of those assists from free kicks, so we'll keep an eye on that. Bradley's ball wasn't the most accurate. Easily able to be picked up by Napolis. Here he is again. He's one of the survivors from that Gold Cup team. It's DeAndre Yedlin at right back, uh, who made his name really at the World Cup in Brazil and has been based in England more recently. He's First. really enjoyed his time with under Rafa Benitez, hasn't he? He's one of the few players to play for Sunderland and Newcastle. You better whisper that in that area. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's great for him. He's, he's in the championship now, not the Premier League, but uh, he's playing for a man who's won the Champions League. He's also playing for a man that wants him to attack. So I look at that time with Sunderland where he learned the defensive principles and, and shored up his defensive side of things. But now under Rafa Benitez, he's either coming off the bench playing as a winger or he's playing as an attacking fullback. I think it's been good for DeAndre Yedlin's career. No goals so far for the U.S. on this difficult surface I think Jurgen Klinsmann there was horrified when he saw it probably the players were as well but they have been taught under this regime to just get on with things it was playing in behind Gomez had made an interesting run but the debutant goalkeeper Ethan Horvath has his first bit of work as a senior US player he plays in Norway for Molde they're in fourth place in the Norwegian league he's the youngest keeper that the US have had since Bill Amid back in 2012. The normal numbers one and two, Brad Guzan and Tim Howard being rested for this particular uh, assignment. And I think it's okay. I, I was fine with the decision because, Ian, how often when you look at your third and fourth goalkeepers, is it in a January camp and not actually a full international? So I, I'm okay with Jurgen Klinsmann and his staff using this opportunity not to bring in Brad Guzan or Tim Howard and, and look at his options. And I think Ethan Horvath, as of right now, is the number third goalkeeper. Well, he's the one getting first crack here, isn't he? Because he's also got David Bingham of San Jose here and William Yabra, uh, who plays for Leon in Mexico. And I would put Bill Hamid in that discussion as well at DC United. Cuba, who made an OK start. Reyes looks to play it in, it isn't accurate enough, and John Brooks can get it away. Brooks, who has been injured recently, missing games for her to Berlin, who are going great guns in the Bundesliga. And Pulisic there at odds 
with the uh, the bumpy ground. This, this is like going back to when you were a kid, isn't it? The sort it of surfaces you had to play on when you were about eight or nine. And you got to get on with it. You have to find a way to acclimate yourself and, and have a way to have an impact on this game because a lot of these World Cup qualifiers in CONCACAF, it's not the prettiest. Go to Guatemala, go to some of these Panama. They, these fields aren't easy. I just think it's not being talked about enough. A quick set piece here from Cuba. And Andes takes it. Just rather overhit it. Ian, it's difficult for the United States to find quality competition during these international breaks. I mean, who are you going to find? Well, and, everyone's and, playing qualifiers aren't exactly. they, all around the world. Well, and anyone you want to play of substance. So uh, as much as people criticize, well, why are you playing Cuba? Why are you playing New Zealand? And we'll be there Tuesday night. But the, the bigger discussion, I think, is that how did the United States find quality friendlies in the next 18 to 19 months? It is a factor, that's for certain. And don't forget, you can see that. USA New Zealand game from Washington DC beginning at 8 Eastern on ESPN also streaming live on the ESPN app. Gomez plays it inside. Here's Hernandez who's shown up quite well early on here for the Cubans. They've only ever played in the World Cup finals once in 1938 in France. And got to the quarterfinals by the way. Much reduced competition in those days. There are only three non-European teams who made the journey to play. Brooks's challenge is penalised on Mikel Reyes of Cruz Azul. Cuba have only won two of their last 14 games, and listen to this, they failed to score in nine of the last ten. They did beat Guatemala in the Gold Cup last July, and Reyes, who's playing today, got the winner. He's played forward by Hernandez, Yedlin's header away. Back in by Francisco. It's a yellow card. Brooks. to Jeff Cameron he's been used already in three positions by Stoke City this season most latterly in midfield you can actually hear Jurgen through the <laughs> field mics <laughs> trying to be as positive as possible Napolis with the throw for the Cubans broken up by Cameron Really enjoying the surface too much as Sayers, a tall midfield player, made run forward the uh, linesman halting that attack. The officials, by the way, from Panama today with Jafeth Perea as the referee. Well, Cuba has posed a little bit of a threat the last three to four minutes with Hernandez off the back shoulder of Michael Bradley, is running at the two center backs. He's caused a little bit of an issue here. Over the last three or four minutes. Cameron's long ball forward. Laid off by Altidore to Bobby Wood. Wood still. <laughs> Biggest threat yet, really, from the US. Good work from Bobby Wood. And that's the understanding I'm talking about with Josie Altidore and even Jurgen Klinsmann was talking about in this training camp is that Bobby Wood has to acclimate himself a little bit. Let Josie Altidore be the target, play underneath him. Great ball forward from Jeff Cameron into the chest of Josie Altidore. Even a better layoff to Bobby Wood. Good chemistry there between those two. Wood playing these days for Hamburg, who are bottom of the Bundesliga at the moment. Bradley to curl it in. It's gone a long way. The defending left a lot to be desired, but no US player could apply the touch it needed. Oh, and you can see Sanchez, he, he's left scratching his head with how. Awful defending that was from Cuba on a set piece ball bouncing twice in the six yard box, but lucky for them, no one from the United States getting on the end of it.
talking about the hand of friendship being extended here with this friendly game. Some of the US players were actually in a Cuban school teaching yeah. Cuban children multiplication tables. I think Omar Gonzalez was involved, wasn't he? Perry Kitchen, uh, Steve Birnbaum, Michael Bradley. Yep. Great story. <laughs> Walking around Havana and they saw a class together and the teacher came out of the room, invited them in and Omar Gonzalez in his Spanish taught a multiplication table. <laughs> that is fantastic. And you got to embrace it, though, Ian. As a player, this is a great, it's mm. almost like a field trip. Mm. Wouldn't have happened in about 1962, no. would it? No, it wouldn't have. And one or two later years as well. To put it this way, 2008 during the World Cup qualifier, that wouldn't have happened either. 1962, the year of the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the world seemed on the brink. Piedra, up towards Saez here. Two nifty bits of footwork from him in the early stages. Michael Bradley sitting deep. Interesting to see how his career might evolve in the next year or so. Of course, he's been halfway around Europe and back. You surprised to see Michael Bradley in that role after Jurgen Klinsmann looked you and I in the face in Columbus for the Guatemala World Cup qualifier and said no chance he'll play as a number six. Well, I think he's better with the game in front of him Agreed. like this, picking the passes like a quarterback. Well, and the other aspect too is when you've got a guy like Christian Pulisic and young players that can break it down going forward. I think the evolution of Michael Bradley in that defensive role is imminent. Julian Green. He's only had one appearance, and that was in a cup match for Bayern Munich this season. But that is a tough place to get a break, isn't it? Carlo Ancelotti, his coach now. Nicely done that, and towards Wood. It's cut out by Lopez. It's only fallen here to Pulisic. Kleschen was looking for the one to around the edge of the box. Hernandez has done very well indeed. There. Reyes is offside. And, and Ian, as much as we're talking about the difficult conditions for the United States, it's also difficult to assess whether or not Cuba has any talented players. But what we've seen 22 minutes in, Hernandez is a special player. He plays for the Cuban champions, Via Clara. They won the title in Cuba more than any other team. But of course, this country does face problems with funding of its league and getting top level type kind of competition. So they very rarely make it through to the final stage of uh, World Cup qualifying. They're usually knocked out at the semi final stage. But there's always a player. Ozzy Alonso for the Seattle Sounders came mm. from Cuba. I mean, there's always a player. And you can bet right now that MLS scouts are trying to watch that game but this game but it's just difficult to assess what the game is but one or two have defected haven't they yep. over the years including Cuba's all-time leading scorer Lester More here's Hernandez who's done very well early on he's obviously very comfortable on the ball it's picked up by Kleschen here for the US who are looking for the quick break Bobby Wood quick enough Altidore's up there with him and he doesn't manage to link up with his strike partner. But his first touch was perfect. And that's why I, I think if Josie Altidore and Bobby Wood can get on the same page and love playing together, Bobby Wood's got those slashing runs. He runs off the of center forwards very well. He runs the channels very well. Obviously, the field, the difficult second touch. But you just love the run and the first touch from Bobby Wood. Cuba's latest attempt to advance in the World Cup came a cropper when they played Curacao and went out on away goals over the two legs. So that was the end of that. Looking for a prestige win here. Green cutting inside. Great work. Julian Green. Can he finish it? Very good save with his feet by Sanchez. And really the first time this afternoon we've seen Julian Green have a couple touches going forward. 
lot of people shaking their heads. Julian Green gets his second start today, but great technique and cut to lose his defender. If it not for Sanchez, the United States leading 1 0. Good positive piece of play. Cameron couldn't quite win the header. Green's only other start was in a win away from home against the Czech Republic. Now then, here's Gomez. Feeling it forward, Yedlin was very aware, and the goalkeeper coming out there very positively. Horvath controlling his area. There's a question. He used to play in Belgium for Anderlecht for quite a long time. Played in the Champions League for them. Francisco wants to take this one, Carlos Francisco, who plays for a club known as uh, Santiago de Cuba. Yedlin to hook it away. Gomez. Caballero on the far side. And cuts it back, and Bradley was. Glad he was the man who was just waiting on the end of that. It's a decent attack from the Cubans. And now this plays it wide. Reyes is waiting in the middle, hoping that there can be a supply line to him. Gayless. Question. Just look at the way that ball is rolling across the surface, bobbling almost every yard it travels. Brooks found a good ball, nevertheless, across that surface that time. Bradley chipping it into space, Pulisic. ESPN's coverage of the European qualifiers for the World Cup continues this week on Sunday. Iceland hosting Turkey in Group I action from Reykjavik, then on Tuesday on ESPN2, Slovenia against England in Group F. Coverage of both games beginning at 2.30 Eastern, and both matches streaming live on the ESPN app as well. England, of course, now in the hands of Gareth Southgate off of the uh, shenanigans with Sam Allardyce. Yedling gets it away. Altidore... Helps it on. Is that what we're calling it? Shenanigans? Well, <laughs> just just so we don't linger too long on the subject, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Clint Dempsey got a hat trick, by the way, in that 6-0 uh, win the US had over Cuba at the Gold Cup. And Omar Gonzalez scored his only goal so far against Cuba in a USA shirt. Gonzalez is one of those on the bench for this game. Sayers picked a beautiful ball to that far side there. Caballero with the cross shot, and Horvath is quite happy to see that whistle past his post. Nice build up play from the Cubans again there with Sayers at the heart of the move. Great ball from Sayers. 40 yards over the head of Julian Green, opening up that back four 
of the United States. That is a great ball from Saez on this surface. There is a feeling that Cuba at some point will improve as a CONCACAF power. It is the biggest island in the Caribbean, 11 million people. And football is growing, of course, baseball's king. And grabbed by Horvath and good distribution too from him. Fabian Johnson turning up on the right-hand side this time. In the curl, one in behind, it's pretty harmless. Caballero just wanted too long on the ball, really. One thing this surface wasn't before this game is watered. You can see that it's dry, it's dusty, it's bumpy. There's no running water in the stadium yet. Yeah, as we were saying. Even some of the players were saying they had to cut the grass with an old fashioned lawnmower. It's just it's a difficult situation. But it, that's part of the home field advantage that they have is playing on a surface like this. If they're playing on a real good surface, the ball's moving quickly. The United States is putting them under pressure, but now the field slows down the United States, and now they've got an opportunity to maybe catch them on the break. Bit of a second gear performance so far from the US here. Pulisic taking another knock, and you can hear really the pitch side microphones picking up his groans. Felt the weight of the challenge from other Hernandez. Half an hour gone. No goals for the US, and not that many signs of one, in all honesty. Not yet. A couple of half chances. Julian Green had a good one. Yeah. Six, seven minutes ago. Bobby Wood with a layoff from Josie Altidore, but that's been pretty much it. We've seen very little of Yedlin getting forward, very little of Fabian Johnson getting forward. There's Michael Bradley winning his 123rd cap today. That equals Demarcus Beasley, puts him joint sixth all time on the appearance list for the US. And he still isn't 30. Green again. And Gokey beheld that well because it took off just in front of him off a bump. Green's had a couple good opportunities today to get after that right fullback of Cuba. Come inside, come outside. He's only had two opportunities to impact the game, and both of them he's done well with his opportunities. Here's Hernandez, got the better of question. Reyes have made a run in behind there. And yeah, offside. Take your pick, really. Hernandez has been the most dangerous player for Cuba, hands down. It's usually one pass split and question and Michael Bradley and then it's given Hernandez the opportunity to run at the two center backs and if not for better timing of the runs from the wide players Cuba may have themselves a breakaway here. Yedlin to plant for Altidore with the layoff. Question played wide. Pulisic. I think he's just about made everyone at Borussia Dortmund understand that's how he wants his name to be pronounced. Pulisic, not Pulisic. So that's what everybody called me back home in Hershey. I only say that because I know we'll be bombarded <laughs> with phone callers. From you people will. Saying, oh, you're getting his name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good player anyway. Corner kick here for the US then. Bradley. Well defended by Saez, getting it away. You do get the feeling that if the United States are going to score a goal here, it's coming off a set piece. 
every single one of them they've had two or three runners completely free losing their Cuban marker. If not for a better delivery I wouldn't be shocked if the United States get a goal here off a set piece. Science goes up for the header. Here's Caballero. Thought about the shot and offside. It will be offside. It's a pity because it was a cute ball through. Interesting exercise today, I think, in the first 35 minutes is we're seeing the United States a little disjointed on the back line, some stepping high up, some staying. As you look at it, four offside from Cuba, and all four of those were just early runs. So obviously, that's part of the game that even though the field's bad, the conditions are difficult, Jurgen Klinsmann can look at this back four that he started four of the five games in Copa America and assess them as a unit going into that Mexico game November 11th. It's quite a start, isn't it, that the U.S. have in the hex. Mexico and Costa Rica away, which is a mighty difficult game. Caballero now for Cuba has more than held their own to be fair to them so far Hernandez probably been the best player on the pitch Pietra plays it in Hernandez and well held by Horvath listen to the crowd there they thought that was going to be an opening goal for Cuba and for the first time in the first half they finally time their runs better in wide areas and it allows their most dangerous player Hernandez to step in as that third or fourth attacker but that high line from the United States will be exposed if Cuba times their runs on point. Great run from Hernandez coming in late, top of the 18. Pulisic can't keep it in play. Frustrating day for him so far. You'd have to say Julian Green on the other side has made a bit more of an impression. Yeah, and finally Cuba times their break correctly and, and Horvath doing a good job of just staying there fundamentally Making sure he's reading the chance, and that's a difficult job on this field for a goalkeeper. Any ball hit on the ground, it may bounce differently. Well, the referee finding a need to talk to the goalkeeper, Savi Sanchez, about something. Was that wasting time or what? You got me. Mm. Who knows, really? Improved performance this from the Cubans who may feel they have something to prove. They've had a bit of a wretched time of things just lately with going out of the World Cup early. Come and get it is the message to the goalkeeper. There's no problem for him in the end. Yeah, the uh, the Cubans have beaten been beaten 6-0 by the USA and Mexico, 5-0 by Nicaragua, 4-0 by Panama over the last year or so and their most recent game before this one was a 3-0 defeat against French Guyana in the Caribbean Cup. So they needed something better with another new coach in charge. You think the US looked at the surface here today Taylor and thought we've got to just tweak the way we're going to play a bit on this it's no good trying to play a passing game through midfield no and you have to be honest I can guarantee you some of the players looked at the field and the first thought they have is the last thing I want to do is get hurt Come on, Bobby. and that's the difficult part of this is Jurgen Klinsmann made a real point of it this morning as much as this is a goodwill game you still have to treat it professionally you still have to go about your business professionally and find a way to acclimate yourself to the field, to the conditions, to the opponent, etc. Well, a long ball is being played forward towards Wood and Altador, and so far the Cuban defense have dealt with most of them pretty well. Here's Julian Green. Question. It's well defended in the end by Lopez.
Outside of the goalkeeper, Taylor, how far away is this from being the USA's A team, as it were? I, I think I would throw the goalkeeper and also Julian Green into the mix. But other than that, I think this is the back four you'll see November 11th against Mexico. I think Michael Bradley obviously will sit in front. Pulisic, I think Sasha Kleshin starts, and I think you got Bobby Wood, Josie up front. I do think Julian Green's position is the one outlier, and obviously the goalkeeper, as you said. Bedoya, by the way, is injured for this uh, game. Very often a part of the starting lineup. Oh, really a bad mistake. Green can't quite keep it in play. U.S. have been training ahead of this game in Miami. And of course, our thoughts are with everybody in Florida at the moment with the hurricane causing such devastation. The U.S. decided they were going to take an 8 a.m. flight out. They moved that forward to 1 a.m. a couple of days ago just to get ahead of the weather and make sure they got to, uh, to Cuba. Just the east side of Cuba affected a little by the, the hurricane, the Guantanamo area, but... Here in Havana, towards the west of the island, no problems. But Florida is just getting absolutely yeah. pummeled right now. I spoke with my family in West Palm Beach, and you said it best, Ian. Your, your thoughts and prayers are with everyone down there having to deal with it. Yeah, it's frightening. We were wondering whether that game against New Zealand right. in Washington, D.C. might end up being threatened, but uh, the word is that the hurricane is going to eventually yep. head off into the uh, ocean. Don't forget, that game can be seen Tuesday at 8 with us on ESPN. We're saying against New Zealand. Just a chance we'll have a better surface, I think, there. Well, not often do you say <laughs> RFK is a better environment than a facility, but this is one of those few examples. And Brooks doesn't believe he committed a foul. Referee thought otherwise, though. This is an interesting World Cup qualifying cycle for John Brooks. I think one of the talking points in this qualifying is to, does he become a staple for this team? Because I feel like he, in every single time he has a good performance or gets involved, there's an injury that creeps up and then he's out of it. I mean, when you look at John Brooks, he's only 23 years of age. I mean, th this is an opportunity where he can really become the center back for the next two World Cup qualifying cycles. There are one of the other two uh, people in the mix, aren't there? Omar Gonzalez, of course, and Matt Beasler is not involved with this squad. Steve Birnbaum. Yeah, the, the, a long way out from out of the picture, Beasler. De Andre Yedlin. Again, they're just looking for that long ball, bypassing the midfield. It's it's not that pretty to watch as a result of that. Caballero plays it inside to Hernandez, and, and the long ball forward is aimed towards Caballero, making this run down the left-hand side. He thought he was fouled by Yedlin, but no-one else did. Three minutes to the break. I think Jürgen Klinsmann, even given the problems with the conditions we'll want something a little better than this in the second half won't he yeah I think so I think you're also going to see multiple changes and in, in players get a run out I would agree with that but you also have to be very honest with the conditions and what's going on and I think you, you even hear Jurgen say it on our world feed here through the microphone of just saying played through Josie look for the second balls it's just difficult to have any rhythm in possession. You yeah, almost had to play like a Route 1 team here, bar those little incursions from uh, Julian Green.
free kick to Cuba. Coming up to half time. We'll get some analysis from the ESPN FC team at half time. See what they think of it. Gomez, it's a horrible miscue, really. He's really overhit that in a bad way. Jeff Cameron. 49th cap for him. Altador, by the way. He's up to 96 today, and it looks like he'll be the second youngest ever to get to 100 caps for the USA. The leader in that department, of course, is Landon Donovan. Who's on the comeback trail? Hernandez. Fabian Johnson easily holding off Alberto Gomez. Just a feeling here that the USA are doing this without engaging any higher gears. Again, they go long, up towards Altidore. He's got it as well. There was a push. The referee was there, saw. Well? Mm, well, that's what the ref thought. Yeah, there's no secret what Jurgen wants to do. He wants to lump it forward, play for the second ball off off of Josie Altador and I think Josie mm. that's a difficult one I'm not sure I saw a foul there but quite honestly that if you're going to try to play through the feet of Sasha Kleshin and Michael Bradley it hasn't really worked Ian. well they've just bypassed them you have to last 20 minutes for certain it's a little bit reminiscent of um, Wimbledon circa 1988 get the ball put it in the mixer see if anyone wins a header and win the second ball or hope to do that anyway but they do have the big excuse of it's very hard to play the ball around and slick passing you may be the only one on this telecast <laughs> that knows what now, Wimbledon in 98 was doing <laughs> 88 88, 88. 88. Sorry, exactly. well, what they were doing then was winning the FA Cup <laughs> my apologies beating, that was seven beating Liverpool <laughs> you're forgiven there it is, no goals and not too many signs of one from a rather second-gear United States. We'll be back in just a moment.